Hello, Internet. I'm Hamster Bomb. And I'm Zach. And this is Hitbox, the gaming podcast where we talk about whatever we freaking feel like talking about in the world Dang of it. Vigi Games. Gosh darn it. And today <laughs> we're talking about a lovely year for video games as we've been going through the, um, basically the entire history of video games year by year and talking about some really big influential games. Oh, yeah. And uh, by the end, talking about what we think is our game of the year for that year. So we're going to go back in time to 1993 and discuss a whole lot of games that came out this year. In fact, this was another tough year where we had to start axing some really big stuff we just wanted to talk about. But obviously, Ooh. these episodes have been running kind of long, so... If we skip some huge games that you love, we're sorry. Obviously, you can talk about it down in the comments, and um, we're doing our best to try and move on because yeah. we've got um, a lot of really cool ones today to talk about, and um, I want to get the ones that we can't actually play on um, different like uh, classic systems that we have on here, and so we're just going to jump straight into looking at a boop. Mist. Mist. This is um, specifically for PC. I'm going to try and pull up some good shots from this game while... Zach, tell us all about Mist. Oh my gosh, Mist. So, I was alive at this time, and people I remember talking about were like, Oh my I gosh. I was barely just, alive. You were barely alive, I know. <laughs> but I just remember later on, people were like, Oh my gosh, Mist is one of the best things ever. Um, so the whole point of Mist, it's a point-and-click adventure game that does away with item management... Di basically dialogue or interactables or anything you are a actually i don't really remember much of the story all that i remember is that there's yeah, two I don't brothers either yeah there's two brothers warring over the books that contain all these worlds that their father made and you're basically going between all these different worlds solving puzzles and trying to you know undo what the brothers have done more importantly though i mean like yeah that's the big story but um yeah. what people we're freaking out about this at the time was the graphics. As oh you gosh, can, yeah. If you're just like looking at this, this is not an updated version of it, though there are updated versions of Mist, obviously. Oh yeah. But it was a grand 3D spectacle. Yes. Um, so, On CD. Yes. Yeah, so now you were actually not like walking around in 3D. That we're not that advanced yet. No. This is still 1993. You're gonna see the rest of the stuff that you know. I mean, just look at what came out in '92, and then think the next year you're seeing this. Yeah. This is intense. So, uh -huh. no, you're not moving around. Like I said, it's just a bunch of still frames, and you're technically, like, you, you click into the distance, and you'd say, okay, you want to move up the bridge or go over the hill. Yeah. Um, and you'll, you know, go to different points. It's, and It's all pre-rendered. Yeah, it's a bunch of pre-rendered shots. Predetermined spots where you go. You're essentially just clicking on a JPEG and kind of choosing where you want to move around and solve the puzzles and yeah. interact with it that it, way. It was one of those big multimedia experiences that hadn't really been done before because, you know, you had that CD quad quality audio, you had these kind of visuals, quick enough load times for the time. So, yeah, yeah, there was just nothing like this. No. And I think that's why it's such a big deal. It's not... Um, even the what you're doing or what it's about, which is kind of weird when, you know, you yeah. have a game that's that's so different. Like, we don't get stuff like this anymore. No. Because it's almost like, I don't want to say it's all been done or all been attempted because we don't know what is to come, but people make really cool inventive stuff with new hardware that nobody else is even trying, and it just looks spectacular. It does one thing really, really well. A lot of games back in this era do like, one thing really, really, really well. Yep. Um, and games today try and, like, be a jack-of-all-trades. Yeah. And by doing that, sometimes they end up failing at little things along the way. A great example yeah. for me is Horizon Zero Dawn. I feel like it's trying to do so many things and kind of flops in little ways that just bother me. Yeah. F full review on that. I don't want to tangent us too far, but um, Mist is one of those older games where it's just focusing on one thing and... Boy, it looks gorgeous. I had a yeah. bunch of old PC games, and even from stuff that came out, like... 96 or so, when yeah, 3D was like really coming. Five years own. later, it didn't even look half this good. No. Not even close. This is insane. Yeah, it's very cinematic, and it's very appealing, and, you know, you see what the developers wanted, and it's, it's a fantastic experience. Um, there's, I think, a new remake that's either coming out or is out now, so mm -hmm. give this one a shot. I think it still holds up. It's, you know, it'll melt your brain slightly, but <laughs> it's good. It's a good kind of, you know, kind of way. So, um, another game that we actually cannot play uh, for you guys today. I, well, te technically, I, c I could play a horrible version of it, 
But it's another very amazing technical marvel, and that is Castlevania Rondo of Blood. Yes. Now, what I'm saying technically, I mean, it is kind of cover. I have um, Castlevania Dracula X, yes. which is... I don't want to call it a Super Nintendo port, um, but uh, it's it's a version of the game that runs on Super Nintendo, and it's not Rondo of Blood. No. So, Zach, you're the Castlevania guy. Yeah. What's Rondo of Blood? Rondo of Blood is one of the greatest gosh diddly dang games ever made. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sticking by that. <laughs> I will fight anyone who says otherwise. Okay. <laughs> so, um, this was the game that really just took a lot of concepts from earlier Castlevania games like Simon's Quest mm -hmm. or Castlevania 3 and really just turned it up to an 11. This was released on the TurboGrafx-16 or what was known in Japan as the PC Engine CD. Mm -hmm. You are Richter Belmont. Uh, a bunch of women have been kidnapped in order to be sacrificed to summon Dracula. Go find them and stop Dracula. It's a Castlevania game. What were you expecting? But the thing that set this one apart is not only in the presentation because there are anime cutscenes mm -hmm. which are very dynamic. The music is CD quality. Again, something you did not really have on you know home consoles really at the time. And the gameplay. Yes, you don't have the freedom with the whip to go in like eight different directions yeah. and all that. But this is the most agile I think that a vampire hunter in the series has been. You can slide. You can do a high backwards jump. Mm -hmm. You can actually do a running kick. The, mul the multiple branching paths is the big one that really sets this one apart. Because depending on how you go, you can try and go and save every single girl that's been kidnapped, including Richter's girlfriend and, mm -hmm. his, and her little sister. Or you could just be a jerk and be like, no, nah, screw you guys, I'm going to go, go fight Dracula. Go straight to the ending. Uh-huh. <laughs> so it's, it is such a good game. It feels good to play. It I, looks uh, good. Yeah, mm. I really wish there was um, a way that they could have gotten this like on the PlayStation but, I mean, obviously it's not out yet, so... Yeah. It's, it, and that's the thing, it's not even out yet! That's how advanced this is. And yeah. so when they're trying to make a home console port, they gotta go to the Super Nintendo, because that's the best that you can do right now. Yeah, right. And, yeah, yeah and even that just garbles this game up. Because I was gonna say, we're two years away from the... Actually, a year out from the PlayStation's release in 94, mm -hmm. so... Uh, if only... It's a shame that this game is so hard to get your hands on. Like, yeah. this version, because the even at the time, you know, trying to find... Well, it's it's technically would take a while to, for a Dracula X to actually happen, but yeah. um, even nowadays, just try and actually play this game. Yeah. It's unfortunate that one of the best Castlevania games is one of the hardest ones to even get your hands yeah, on. Yeah, it play. was Japan only. We got it on the Wii Shop. Of course, that's dead. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. If you have a PS4... There is a collection that comes with Symphony of the Night and this. Ooh. Why so, is that not on the Switch, man? Uh, Konami. Why? It's because of Konami. Konami. Yeah. Gosh, Konami. But Dang still, you, if Konami. you have a PS4 and like a spare 20 to 25 bucks, that's a heck of a deal. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. I would spend that on the Switch in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so go ahead and give it a shot. It's, like I said, amazing. Good stuff. Yes. All right, one last game, I promise. Then we're going to be playing stuff for the rest of this episode. We Woo. have one more game we wanted to talk about, and it is the arcade Virtua Fighter. Virtua which Fighter. Which is debuting in 93. So, big thing that, uh, well, I mean, if you don't even recognize much from Virtua Fighter. A Virtua Fighter is still going on today, right? Um, the Isn't it? Uh, kind of. The fifth game came out around the PS3 360 era. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, if it's been else. kind of quiet. I, and yeah. From ever since it kind of started, did its big thing. I guess we're going back to what Mist was like. This is a graphical game of oh, what yeah. was so cool about it at the time. And um, if you can tell from some of the screenshots here, this is the first 3D fighting game. Yep. Which is a big deal. The, oh gosh, yeah. The, it's it's almost, you know, all that uh, animations and um, the three-dimensional polys, like, now this looked outstanding at the time. I'm going to pull up a shot. Yeah, they're all made up of, like, rectangles and squares. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> some of their, like, poses and stuff is, yeah. it's hilarious today. Yeah. But it was so... So advanced that mm -hmm. like this um, now this is a weird thing in hindsight. This looked so much better than the sprite games. People would say like, oh look at Street Fighter Two. Yeah, you know right. this is terrible compared to Virtual Fighter. <laughs> and of course nowadays we're like, no, no, <laughs> no. Sprite art is gorgeous. Yeah. And Virtual Fighter kind of aged like milk. 
Right. Now that because this is made by the same guy who would eventually go on to make Shenmue and also is the guy who made Hang On. Mm -hmm. This is when they're figuring out how to make a fighter in 3D. Yeah. So it's like you know you can actually move around the field, mm -hmm. um, but you're still locked on a 2D plane. Mm -hmm. But depending on what attacks you can do, you can force your opponent to like to another side. Like if you throw them, there's also ring outs. So it actually takes yeah. arena into account. Mm -hmm. It's just very floaty. It's very stiff. This is when they're still like, yeah, this is the best we can do right now. Yeah, it it's also kind of slow motion and yeah. almost like you're fighting on the moon in slow motion. The other floatiness, it, it's yeah. just because it's kind of waiting for the animations to catch up. It, it, it feels yeah. like that. Um, it's not like the input was slow because obviously that kills a fighter immediately. Oh gosh, yeah. Um, mm. But it was the fact that they wanted to make sure that you weren't like pulling off some crazy fast stuff that's going to beat up the system. So instead it's almost like you really are slow motion bouncing around <laughs> trying yeah. to hit people, which it's more of the spectacle that it even happened in this age. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's, that's cool. It's enough. Sega being Sega. So. Yeah. Yeah. Which is just doing some crazy stuff early on. So hip, hip, hooray. We're moving on. We got some games to play. We got games. We got games to play. All now right. the first one we have in here is going to be, on the Game Boy, remember that thing? We haven't really gotten to talk much about the Game Boy. Not a whole lot, no. No, it's it's mm, got its big um, bangers coming later. But yeah, though there's still a lot of cool stuff to play on the Game Boy at this point. Oh, you know what? I think the game that we're actually looking for, I have on the color. We're going to play the color version of this. So technically, Ooh. I'm not playing the exact same version of this game. But it is basically the same game. Essentially, it is the same game. We're going to be playing Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. And it looks yep. like I'm actually going to save there. So we're going to start yeah. this guy from scratch just so that we can, you know, see the very beginning of this. Because I really like the introduction, this cutscene. Yeah, it's right. The so fact, nice. The fact they were pulling this off on the Game Boy. Right. No yeah. color, obviously. This is the color version, as I mentioned. So mm -hmm. this is all going to be grayscale on the original one. Right. And there was some probably some slowdown, if I remember correct. But the Game yeah. Boy color was a bit more powerful, mm -hmm. so we could handle it. But yeah, just... Look at that. Yeah, and um, as we mentioned before, but I'm going to plug it again, this game only happened because of the outstanding title that we never got, The Frog for Whom the Bell Tolls. One of the, well, another really, really good game. We talked about, I think, in the last year. Yeah. Um, we talked about. We gushed all over that game. And so if this is built on it and it's a Legend of Zelda, you basically just made another awesome game because you just gave yeah. The Frog from the Bell Tolls um, the ability to actually swing your weapon and attack like Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Uh -huh. So, and that's kind of what this is. This is kind of a um, sequel to Link to the Past. It's also a really strange game. This game was developed, um, from my understanding, basically in the free time for a lot of the developers. Yes. And they never really intended on it being like a finished product. And I think it was Miyamoto who saw it and went, you know, it's actually kind of cool. Let's let's see if we can mess with this. Because this game does a lot of weird stuff with... Um, Legend of Zelda. Oh, it actually yep. wants me to jump in here, so whatever, let's do that. Yeah. What's some weird stuff this does? It gives you, like, the rock feather. Link can jump, and yeah. you need to equip it to actually jump over things. And uh, that's the biggest gripe I have with this game. Everything you have to use, mm -hmm. you have to equip. You have to equip your only... shield. You have to equip your sword. And you only have, you only have two, two slots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is a bit of a shame, but they were yeah. working in the con with the constraints they had, but... For what we got, though, like a whole island with a lot to it, a forest, mountain, dungeons, swamps, mm -hmm. it's its surprising what they were able to do, and it's such a really cool game, I feel. And I think it's one of the better 2D Zelda games, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. Um, I never got too far in it when I was playing the original um, yes. but, uh, you actually got the, uh, Switch version, yep. lent it to me, and I was able to complete it that way, so I finally was able to, like, add this one to my video game resume. Uh, playing the original, I'd still like to go back and do, but the problem is, like, most of the things that, um, define this one as opposed to the remake are things that I really don't miss, like, the fact that I have to swap my weapons continually. Yeah. Yeah, like, so if I were to pull up a menu, you're gonna see all of your inventory of items that you're going to be collecting and you're going to be equipping to Link. and uh, The game also gets really cryptic and you might need a guide for several segments of it. It's, yeah. it's a really weird game. Um, almost maybe the um, beginning of Zelda games just being strange. Yeah. Though Zelda eventually after this is going to start 
changing kind of radically each time we get a new title. I mean, um, Ocarina of Time after this is just going to be basically a 3D version of Link to the Past. Yes. Um, just trying to safely define what Zelda needs to be after this yeah, point. It sets up a formula later on that this game just kind of follows, but it takes what is there. Right. And just makes like a sort of almost self-aware like poke at itself. Yeah. It, it, I mean, like, like here we have um, Gordos from... Oh, I thought that was how you moved them. No, it is. You just have to hit and hold the shield and keep moving. I did. You might have oh, the tried, other one! Oh, the other one the other hit one me. Got in the way. Oh. Okay, but anyway, yeah. So we have Gordos from Kirby. Yeah. Um, Kirby himself is even in the game. Yep. There's um, Goombas. Uh, Prince Richard. Yeah. From uh, the Frog from the Bell Tolls is also in this game, and there we go. We found our sword. Yep. So this it's it's a very unconventional game, as you saw. Like I had to adventure somewhere back to where we washed up on shore to find where my weapon was. And um, it, it's kind of uh, Metroidvania-esque in that sense, where, yep. like Link to the Past, you're going all over the place and just kind of exploring, figuring out where you're going, except this owl shows up and kind of tells you, yeah. which is helpful because, I mean, any bits of extra information is a huge help. Right. But also, another huge thing we're kind of glossing over here, this is the Game Boy. Yes. You're taking this on the go, and people were able to take a, a full, new... Legend of Zelda Adventure with a whole new map and dungeons wherever they went. Yes. This is huge. Just for the cost of maybe an 8-pack of AA batteries. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, depending on how good you are at it. <laughs> but, right. uh, yeah. I so, love that little animation yeah. with his sword. Mm -hmm. It's, again, it's just such a good game. It's unconventional. The, like we said, the Switch remake just came out. That's the one to play. Yeah, that is I still the one. have some weird quirks with that game. I don't know if we're ever going to get to that point. Probably uh, not. Probably but... not. We talk, we're talk. we talking about this one. I don't really see a point. Yeah. Unless if there's a video we talk about remakes. But... Ma maybe. You know, maybe we will uh, get to that. There's yeah. there's an endless possibility list of yeah. um, Hitbox episodes we could do. Yeah. But um, anything else you wanted to add to this one? Um, yeah, not really. I mean, it's, it's just... Another really great Legend of Zelda game. So if you yeah. haven't played this one, um, I would just say I recommend the Switch one if you can get your hands on it. Yep. Um, if not, I mean, I still have this uh, original cartridge on Game Boy. I don't know how many times I started the darn thing over trying to get places. Because like, yeah. you play far enough into this and you beat like a dungeon and you put it down for a while, get lost. Then you're completely confused. The guy on the telephone doesn't help you too much. And then you're no. like, well, I don't remember where I was. And you start over and the cycle continued for like... 10 years. <laughs> I, I love the fact that we just glossed over the fact that you can call someone on a telephone for hints in a Zelda game. Oh my gosh. This also has, uh, before we finish this, oh, yeah. the craziest quest, maybe in any game ever, where you're... I think it starts with you getting a little plushy doll, and in the remake, yeah. it's a Yoshi. You give this to somebody to get, like, a ribbon, you take the ribbon, you get, like, a flower, then you get a pineapple, then you get a broom, then you get, then you you get, get like, a mermaid food. scale, you get yeah. dog food. It, 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 you're giving this to random people all over the place, and you the, get a stick, and you just, you just keep this, moving this thing. I think that's, like, the start of, like, the crazy trading quests in yeah. Zelda games. It's the joke cra crazy trading quest. Now, it's it's very much worth doing. Oh, gosh, I yes. didn't realize what I was even doing when it started because it's yeah. so obscure and hard to even start but once you do you get the boomerang at the very end of it uh -huh. and that is busted oh yeah it's the most powerful weapon in any Zelda game I've ever seen them ever give you it yep. basically kills anything kills and anything stuns things that can't be it, killed yeah if, right. it, if it's not dead immediately it's stunned and then you just keep hitting it with the boomerang and it's dead some bosses obviously don't work like that but still no. it's nuts like as soon as i got the boomerang the game was over like, oh yeah I, I won that was it <laughs> um but yeah so it's still a really good time yeah um i'd recommend giving this one a shot if you haven't gotten a chance oh, to um, sure. play Link's awakening exactly. we have one more game and I, it's not a game boy game no it's not this you'd be shocked we are still going back to the nes and this was actually included on here Good. Kirby's Adventure, and it should have been, too. This is a great game. Oh, yeah. So, first you draw a circle, you draw the dot the eyes, big smile, and then, Presto. then you're finished. He's pink. <laughs> Slap him with some pink. <laughs> it's Kirby. Kirby's Adventure. So, yeah, 1993. This oh, is the man. very end of the NES's life cycle, as you know. We're already... We've been talking about Super Nintendo for a while now. Why would you go yeah. back? Because this is, like, the most advanced you're ever going to see the NES pulling off. Like, we uh -huh. have these cute little animations. 
Um, the the gameplay of this is so smooth. Yep. We're in this first. We're in this like overworld here, and it's gonna open up where you'll see that um, stuff blocking me off on the sides is basically going to open as soon as we start beating levels. Yep. Um, I have beaten this entire game. You can double dash or double tap to dash. And this is the first time in a Kirby, Kirby game. Kirby just did that. Yep. yep. Copied. And basically, Kirby becomes Kirby. Kirby existed before this point. Yep, but on this Game Boy, right? Yes, yes. Uh, yes, it was on Game Boy. Um, but this is where Kirby not only, I think, becomes pink for the first time, but this is where Kirby gets that copy ability and really defines what the gameplay is going to be like. Uh-huh. An easy, uh, semi-easy, you know, side-scrolling platformer, but it's with those... comfortable copy... enough. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, compared to, like, other platformers mm -hmm. at the time, especially. yeah. I like its difficulty a lot more than um, a lot of the other later Kirby games. Yeah. Maybe it's the fact that um, you have Kirby, who is so much smaller on screen, uh -huh. than he will be later. He's a lot larger. And he can just fly infinitely. You can fit... Yeah, he can fly infinitely. You can put so much more on screen. Um, I'm going to try and dispose of this. I don't think Poppy Bros gets his bomb ability just yet. Uh, no. Nope, nothing. So I wanted the fire. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there's just so much that you can do with this. And it mm -hmm. felt customizable, like how you want to actually play the game. And like you said, it's a smooth running game. Like I yeah, don't like the, the NES is pulling this off. This right. is amazing. And this is what How Laboratories was able mm -hmm. to do with a lot of their games. They really made some fun, technically phenomenal games. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is our boy. Oh gosh, Masahiro Sakurai. <laughs> Oof. Yep, this yeah. is Masahiro Sakurai's um, creation. Uh huh. Why do you think he's the main character in uh, Super Smash Brothers <laughs> Ultimate? <laughs> So, oh yeah, and there's even uh, bonus stages. I forgot all of this. Oh I, gosh, yeah. I beat this whole game on... Um, let me see. I got it on the eShop on the Wii, I believe, is how I played the whole game. Right. And I'd been meaning to review this and talk about it for such a long time. Big Kerbo. Mm-hmm. Going for that big Kerbo. All right. Are we going to get it? We got I oh. don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, Sometimes uh, it'll wiggle out of the way. Uh, no! Uh, that's course. not fair. <laughs> Why do we have to simulate the real-life physics of the... Oh. Uh, oh, that was another credit. Okay. <laughs> I tapped A on accident. Oh, uh, no big Kerbo. <laughs> no big Kerbo for me, because I think, yeah, you only uh, get two. Yeah, <laughs> Whoops. no bonus. But, you know, you're scrolling up, mm -hmm. down, left, right, diagonal. I mean, and the, and the, I almost said the Switch, oh my lord. The NES is pulling this off yeah, pretty it's, flawlessly. It, yeah, I, I can go pretty darn quick, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's just... You can also retain abilities through stages. You can see I still have fire. Uh-huh, there's just... It's just... I. I don't know. It's just really weird that we got this game so late in the Ooh, NES's life. Uh, but I think, too, if I remember correct... Oh, yep. Did Ooh. you get it? Woo, yeah, that there was close. Oh, man. But um, this is, I think, another thing that HAL Laboratories eventually kind of... Not really got in trouble, but kind of dug their own grave with. They stuck with systems and they stuck with projects for so long that technology advanced yeah. way past where they were like this mm -hmm. and i think the big one that really caused him to become like pretty much a second party developer for nintendo was here's a, the bomb poppy rose there we go yeah was a oh i need that back was a dating sim that they made for the super nintendo when like everything and they released it in 1998 mm -hmm. when the 64 <laughs> playstation and saturn were out yeah so and they lost so much money because it took them so long to make it but Still, though, we still get a lot of good stuff out of that. Like, mm -hmm. again, this. Um, but yeah, that's all I really have to say for this one. What about you? I'd still say, like, if you're going back to play NES mm. games, this is honestly one of the best ones I have oh, ever played. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh. Yep, and you can do this too. Bomb. You can even absorb the bosses when they're when they're done. And boom! Just oh, wanted to showcase it. Nuke, yeah. yeah, he's a screen nuke attack, and that's it. So, um, yeah, I really love this one. Mm -hmm. I... This is probably the first NES game that I just wanted to 100% complete. Well, granted, there's actually a lot to this. I think you can even go back and, um, like, play... Once you beat the whole game, you yeah. unlock a harder difficulty, and you can play through the entire thing again. I think it limits oh, okay. you to th a health of three. Ooh. Yeah, it's, it's tough. And the original playthrough of the game, like, the levels start getting tougher, because Kirby is known for being its easygoing platformer. Yeah. Um... This is probably I know this is probably the most challenging Kirby game. I don't want to say hard because Kirby games aren't really very hard, but just because of the fact that it, it starts throwing a lot of stuff your way and it yeah. knows that you're gonna have those powers, so because of that they 
they scaled it up just a little bit to make sure that you were a little bit more competent with this new ability that it just gave you, which is kind of insane. Like, they gave yeah. you screen nukes. <laughs> so, yeah, it better be tougher. Yeah. So, anyway, we're going to be moving on here with a magical... And we're back with Hi. the Super Nintendo, and we are jumping over to take a look at Mega Man's attempt at uh, leaping into this whole new realm of just outstanding graphics at the time, which is uh -huh. about as clean as you can gonna get with um, sprite art in Mega Man, because Mega Man before was very um, not rude, simple looking. Yeah, I don't want to be rude to yeah. it, but. Um, Seven games in a row, he Holy looked identical. Holy crap, look at all that cash that they got stored. Yeah, <laughs> we need to format that. Ooh. Yeah, I actually skipped the introduction there, but Mega Man, Mega Man, Mega Man, Mega Man. Mega Man X. So, um... Not this... Mega Man 10. Just right, X. not Mega Man 10. <laughs> We're gonna get there later. Way later. <laughs> Maybe, I, I'm not sure. Well, no, I mean, just for, like, releases. <laughs> True, okay. But... Yeah, mm -hmm. so, do you want to introduce this as you're playing, or do you want me to? Uh, you can give me a hand. So this right. is a, a, a weird Mega Man game. Yeah, um, it's like a rebranding, almost. Yeah, it is. What's so weird about this is they were trying to ah, figure out, like, how do we, like, redefine Mega Man? It's almost like this is kind of Mega Man 2, and all the other games were just, like, ports. To yeah. figure out, like, what else are we going to do with this series? Exactly. and Or, like, just creating new levels with the exact same setup is all they really did. They changed up the physics. They changed mm -hmm. up, you know, a few other things. The biggest issue, uh, not issue, but the biggest thing they added to this was the ability to wall slide and wall kick. And charge. And well, charge. Could well, you charge before? Yeah, in later Mega Man. Yeah, like and you three, could slide, four, too, right? Five. I can't slide yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. Slide was three and on, I think. Yes, sir. Um, or four. My I don't Mega really Man, remember. um... Memory not is not the best. Same. I, I wasn't the biggest fan of the older ones. I like the X series, though. The mm -hmm. X series is actually really fun. And from what I hear, um, this one is the best of the three. Yes. Um, like the, Yeah, because they, like I said, they rebranded it. It's like the 90s, edgier version of mm -hmm. what came before in the 80s. I mean, look at the background. Listen to the music. Yeah, <laughs> the music. Oh, the music is in this. I'm not the biggest fan of Capcom's music all, all that much, mm. but for some of them, like this, oh, they'll, they'll walk all over you. Yeah, you I was going to try and charge them. Yeah, but the music that they got out in this, here we go. Now yeah, you can... yeah, they teach you how to wall kick by forcing you yeah. to do it. I, I really a safe like, area. Yeah, I really like um, design like this that kind of teaches the player what they need to do to progress by putting them in a safe situation like that yep. and making like a wordless tutorial. Exactly. Part of the rebranding is that they changed up the story. It's no longer really about Dr. Wily taking over the world with eight robot masters. Mm. It's the... It, kind of initially, <laughs> I know. They, they couldn't help themselves. It's like, mm, it wasn't Bowser kidnapping Princess Peach. This time it was... Oh, wait, no, yes, it was. Yeah, they, yeah but... Like, the whole thing is, it's in the far future. Mm -hmm. Robots have gained sentience. Uh, Sigma, is that right? Yeah, Sigma has come, and, like, there's, like, the Sig the Sigma virus or whatever. Yeah, It's right. causing robots to go maverick. Mm -hmm. And you are X, who is a later descendant or a later type of Mega Man bot, mm -hmm. who is part of the Maverick Hunters going out and stopping these rampaging robots in Sigma's yep. army. Supposedly just four at first, too. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's only four. I bet those other four spaces on the map aren't going to open up and do anything interesting oh, later. No, of course. Yeah. So obviously, not. it's actually yeah. eight. And um, as soon as you do that, you go to fight your boss. At least in this boss fight, you don't have to worry about winning. <laughs> yeah. Although the sad part is, you actually can die in a story one where you don't, where you shouldn't die. I found that out the hard way the first time I played through this game because I was terrible <laughs> at this. Yeah. And so the lieutenant comes down in the armor, and mm -hmm. you're like. Oh, yeah, I can beat this in a course. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, if you just do enough damage. Oh, no, nope, he's, yeah. Yeah, that's, so uh, that's you just have to take enough, and then... Yeah, he'll stun you, and that's what's right. supposed to happen. I think I ran into him with my last hit point, and oh. I died, and I had to do that whole level all over oh. again. It's fine. It's, it's a good, like, introductory level to, yeah, like, teach yeah, people how complain. the game's actually going to work. Yeah, so what? here we go. And then you're suddenly saved by that th that red Mega Man De person. Deus Ex Machina, <laughs> yeah. man. Let's move back before we make yeah. more fools of but, ourselves, but it's still a really good game. Yeah, go ahead and try them out. They're, they're easily accessible yeah, with the Mega like Man. Yeah, it looks like I was farther than that, so I'm, gonna, yeah. I'm just going to save where the, we're at. The Mega Man X collections. Pick them up. They're, they're mm -hmm. worth it. What's the next one we got uh, on our docket? B -b 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 oh, it's included on here. Check that out. Oh, wow. Wow. Hmm. Secret of Mana. Secret of Mana. All right, now look at this. We're talking about a Squaresoft RPG. 
Zach, you have the four. <laughs> All right, sweet. So this is the, actually the second in the Mana series. The first one we actually got uh, in the States was known as Final Fantasy Adventure on the Game Boy. Uh, they renamed it from like Seiken Densetsu to that because Final Fantasy was more of a known name in the States. So the big one that really separated this from a lot of other RPG or a lot of other Square games, this is real time. Uh, so w with the twist. You have a little bar at the bottom of the screen that determines your attack power. So you can wait until that bar is... Oh, hi, Hamster. How you doing? Hamsty. Hamsty. It didn't give me enough characters. How do I go back? Uh, I don't remember, B. Uh, it's, it says on the uh, it's, screen. It is. But anyway, so... Um, <clears throat> there's a little bar on the screen that determines your attack power. You can wait till it charges up to 100%, and then you can let out a, a, a an attack for full damage. So it's a weird mix between like real-time combat and like turn-based like strategy and you can just button mash and hmm. slash but you're only doing like piddly damage at that sounds point sounds kind of like um super mario rpg a little bit yeah where you kind of have to time your presses and wait yeah, it out for attack uh, does defense work the same way uh no uh, you just you gotta take you, what you take yeah you you get equipment and all that sort okay. of stuff um but yeah so and this is also one where you get multiple party members and the ai controls the other two that join your party and it's a really fun game. You get multiple weapons. This is also the introduction of known as the uh, ring system. So you press the pause button and like a little circle pops up around you of options. Mm -hmm. And it's very simple to go through. You don't have to keep pulling up lists. Mm. You can just select what you want like with a quick button press and the A. And it's very easy to go through the menus that way too and to equip like items and all that stuff. It's, it's really in depth and for a you know, for what we were seeing in the States, nothing like this. We didn't really see much like this outside of Zelda or, you know, stuff like that. Only with mm -hmm. a lot more RPG elements and, you know, a more typical fantasy story. Yeah, especially at the time, at the time too, because there's a lot of um, big RPGs that uh, Square's going to be making soon. And uh -huh. this is kind of their... Um, experimenting with the systems so that they can yeah. learn how to like really get it right when the, it comes to their like their final fantasies like mm -hmm. i said before with the, the super mario rpg they're also going to do um chrono trigger yes. they are like messing around here and like figuring out how to do this system and they are pros at it yeah and one other thing that i nearly forgot which is a huge selling point for this it's a multiplayer RPG. Ooh. So as soon as you start unlocking the other uh, characters... Plug in other ports and just keep playing. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah, they can I take I didn't even know that. That's awesome. Yeah. That, and that was like... Man, if I had if I had this back in the day, I'd been like, no, nope, uh, people, you got to play Secret of Mana with me. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I want you to be the little archer guy. What if I don't want to be the archer guy? What if I want to be sword guy? No, I'm player one. <laughs> <laughs> But the whole point of this story is that you're a kid in a village who have, you know, you and your friends have heard about a secret legendary treasure in a nearby village. Or in, nearby the village, rather. I'm going to find course, a Pokemon. Oh, uh, no, <laughs> no, okay, the encounter rate's not too... Yep. Oh. So, this is basically the, the archetype of the choosy magical artifact. Mm. Because, unbeknownst to you, you know, the secret of mana will be made known to you through the sword of mana. Which is inexplicably here. Um, you were going the right way. Oh, was I? Yeah, you were. So you need to go out of the river, over to the side, and down. That and that is, yeah, just keep going. You have to just go further Oh, that's down. weird that it was stopping me. Yeah, I don't know what oh, that's all about. Oh, that was, w I didn't think I could actually make it. Okay. No, you're good. Um, yep, see, look at that. Oh, yep, there we go. Yep, so you gotta, thing. you gotta find a way back into the river. But I don't remember. But yeah, We have other stuff to play, too. Yeah. It's a phenomenal game, though. I'd say. Um, but yeah, give it a shot. Um, the Collection of Mana uh, cartridge for the Switch is available, which has this in there. Give, go ahead and give it a go. Really fun stuff. Yeah. Oh, this uh, is the weirdest thing. All three games we were just going to play are included on this and oh, in a row. I'll be. That's weird. Huh. Star Fox. Star Fox. This is a big deal. Even though Nintendo doesn't want to think so. No. <laughs> At least not anymore. Oh, this is oh. one of the saddest, most forgotten series well it gets revived sort of sometimes later but kind of yeah at so, the expense of other things so this is taking advantage of the super fx chip that yep. um was uh working with the super nintendo uh -huh. and this is the first time that we're seeing the super nintendo really do like full-on 3d because uh -huh. it is not 
built for that. Not at all. And we have a full-blown, like, space shooter flying forward 3D depth. Basically a space harrier kind of style game, except... Right. um. The balancing is way better. It's not like one hit and you're dead or anything like that. Yeah, and it's actually using 3D polygons instead of scaling sprites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the Super FX chip was made by a company called Argonaut Games. Mm -hmm. And this was their baby, this game as well, that they worked in conjunction with Nintendo on. This is also another really cool part of this. You, yes. you choose a path of uh, like where you want to go throughout the um, galaxy, basically, to make it to Venom and stop Andross. And um, each path has various levels. You can see, like, your score is uh, registered for each one. There's, mm -hmm. like, a level one, level two, and level three. We're just going to go to the, the basic one. Either way, you always start at Corneria. Uh-huh. This game would uh, sort of get remade, well, actually, how many times? I was going to say Star Fox 64 is effectively a remake of this game. but uh, Two or three times, I think. Yeah, Something it's going to get fact. remade a lot. And yeah. um, it's, it's like a famous game that just never gets its sequel, even though they're... There is, was an unreleased sequel. It was, and they it was, released it on this. This is actually the first time it was ever released. Yeah, you can also play it on um, Nintendo Switch Online. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Check this out. This is the Super Nintendo. Yes. This is the Super Nintendo. A panning and zooming shot. We've got, like, proper 3D and... There's multiple characters. Less, yeah, more or less pop, proper perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's phenomenal what they were able to get away with. Like, yeah, it's using simple shading to represent the ships and all that stuff but yeah the music too I, the thing i love about this too is that shigeru miyamoto was drawing upon his love for like a whole bunch of like older media i think like the thunderbirds which was an old kid show that used puppets mm -hmm. uh, to be in planes and stuff as the inspiration for the star fox team and the way they talked and sounded oh ooh. oh i was trying to boost ah uh, yeah it's um Maybe, yeah, there's boost. There you go. Okay. Um, but yeah, so it's, like we said, it's a 3D space shooter. It's on rails. You're constantly going forward. Uh, you got have, double laser. Yep, you got the double laser. Um, ooh. I am not doing well. <laughs> no. The, <laughs> the frame rate's obviously not the best. No, and the other and big... And pop-in is gonna be a problem just because of the draw distance of, you know, the, I can't even believe we're using these words to describe a Super Nintendo game. Yeah. <laughs> The, ones the guy's carrying a giant, like, rectangle or something. Oh. That was miserable. <laughs> the other thing that kind of annoys... Ooh, right into the building. Ooh! Uh, but the other thing that annoys me a little bit about this game, the lack of an aiming reticle. It's kind yeah. of hard that, to... Yeah, it, it really would have helped. Yeah, which gets rectified mm -hmm. later, but, you know... Oh, yeah, that's actually, to get Star Fox 2, I had to beat the first level of this game. Oh. Uh, yeah, and then it will unlock. It's the only game that actually unlocks on any of the classic consoles that um, I've seen. interesting. Yeah, it's huh. weird, but okay. Right. I mean, once you know the controls and you're kind of getting used to what you're doing and you don't miss the checkpoints, yeah. <laughs> then you'll do a lot better. Yeah, it, it's still a fun game, just... I would say just keep your expectations in check when you're playing this yeah. and know what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. Oh, he just, <laughs> he just falls face plants into the ground. Ooh, ooh. Oh, my lord. It, it's just such a You can a still fun shoot game. your teammates? Like, here, are these peppies yelling at me because I shot him. <laughs> Let's smash. Let's smash him. Uh, anything can you barrel else? roll? Yes! yes you can. <laughs> <laughs> anything else you wanted to add to this little it's, gem? You know, um. We were kind of saying before, it's impressive that um, a lot of these games were pulling stuff off graphically, or yes. the gameplay was really cool. This is kind of doing a lot of things at once. It kind of is one of those jack-of-all-trades um, mm -hmm. at the time. Obviously, nowadays, I'm saying, okay, this frame rate's awful. The, obviously, the polygon count's atrocious, but yeah. you gotta remember what I'm even playing on. <laughs> uh-huh, with an enhancement chip and all that yes, stuff. Yes, with yeah. an enhancement chip. So like, here, that... That, um, whoa, that Ooh. lag was awful. Yeah. Which, this is not the last time they'll use the FX chip either. No, no, there's no. actually some uh, pretty cool games that they did utilize with this. And I think we'll be talking about one of them later on. Mm, will we? Intent. Yes, actually. Not in this video, we not won't. A, not in this one, but yeah. a later year. Yes, we probably will. Yes. So, watch oh, it, Fox! Watch it, Fox. I don't know. I just love, like, the characters and the world of this. It feels almost like a rare game. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, from Nintendo. And 
I just really wish that there was so much more that we had from Star Fox, because this feels so good to be well, in this world. Well, Alex, it's our fault that we did not make Star Fox Zero on the <laughs> Wii U a bestseller. Otherwise, uh, we would have got more Star Fox, uh -huh. don't you know? <laughs> Maybe it was their fault for screwing up what Star Fox was. Oh, by... God. I just wish they knew what to do. It's like, it's not that hard. It's yeah. not that hard to make a good... They've done it. Mm -hmm. They've made good Star Fox games. They they have. And Star Fox 64, it's a shame that that's probably <sighs> the best out of them. Yeah. I mean, you could probably say that the um, 3DS one might be. But, I mean, but really, that's... we're just talking about the same game. This is just remakes of the exact same game. Uh-huh. Basically. Oh. Did I miss? Yeah. Uh, I might have Look, gotten him. No, nah, his... No, you just hit his missiles with that, yeah. I'm but, trying to hit the... Oh, yeah. They drop, I guess. Yeah, there's... No, they they just fell off, didn't they? Oh, yeah, no, they did. No, it's, wor it's totally working. Yeah, it's working. Okay, okay. cool. I, I just never... Use, I just mashed A the way... My whole way through Yeah, I, I normally do, but just for the sake of, like... Yeah, we're gonna beat a, a Star Fox boss on here. Oh, watch out. Oh, you got... Bam! And, yep, there you go. Yay! See, so that's all you gotta do, and you unlock, um... The you know second what? game on here. Huh? Or you could just play it on NSO, because it's all good. It is all good. Anyway, like, explosions, the gameplay, there's bosses, um, they have, like, a roundup after this, um, it's... All chips All chips check, check in. It just feels... I don't know, it's the world, I think, of Star mm. Fox that feels so good about it, and the that's something that, um, later when we actually do get some sequels to this game, we're probably not gonna talk about them, they kind of... I'm not a fan. Personally, it's um, little, it depends. Yeah, I don't know. It's just so it's it's Star Fox just is like the mm. redheaded one of the many redheaded stepchildren of Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, Sad yeah, w which is definitely a shame. Um, yeah, oh, it looks like I went a different route that way, so I'm gonna yes. save here just so we have a different route to pick when I go back and play uh, some more. But we've got one more game to show you we on the Super do. Nintendo. Yeah. Um, I mostly think of this as a Sega Genesis game, but hey, I've got it running on the Super Nintendo here because it did have a port. So why not? Zombies ate my neighbors. Zombies ate my neighbors. <laughs> this is um, so, so 90s. <laughs> yeah, it's very much a 90s game. And this is the reason um, you don't see it anymore, because, hey, look who made it. Well, they made it. LucasArts, so that's yeah, another well, reason why we don't have... <laughs> multiple well, reasons published by Konami. Mm-hmm. But this is basically a parody of, like, 50s, 60s, like, cheesy horror and science fiction films. Yes. With a very 90s twist. You're mm -hmm. playing as, like, totally tubular kid with 3D so, like, glasses and spiky don't, Yeah, don't shoot, shoot, like, squirt guns. You use and... squirt guns, nerf guns, like, right. little... Yeah, look yeah, at see, this. There we go. Look at this. Multiple players. Oh, I don't have a second player. I do. Oh, I do. We do. We're doing this. We're Give doing us a second. This. Zombies, we now we're in. There we go. Shoot hey. them zombies. No. Save the neighbors. No, we got. We got to save the neighbors. Get, get the key. key. Get the key. Save the baby. I got the kid. All right, okay. now. So, so this um, is the whole point. This of the game. is the entire game. It's just hectic no. craziness. Um, zombies are coming around and uh, eating the neighbors. So yep. you got to go save them. save all the neighbors. We, got, we saved the baby. <laughs> it's actually this is a great co-op game. Yeah, you use this to jump over to yep, yeah. the other the other backyards. Areas, yep, so that way you can... Oh, gotta get yeah. in. Dude, there's a zombie invasion. I don't know where what they actually go, chilling? but yeah, zombies are coming in. I'm even wearing 3D glasses. Yeah. Can you get more 90s I've than I've got this? high tops, a sideways baseball cap, and a squirt gun. <laughs> I was gonna say, this is definitely 90s. Um, but yeah, so it's one of those arcade-style, like, just sh running shooter kind of games. Mm -hmm. And, like, each different, le each different level ah! you get... Oop, um, there's different bosses, like the big one I remember is the giant baby who stomps you. Yeah, later, right. later levels, there's like a Jason ripoff with a chainsaw and mm -hmm. a hockey mask. There's different enemies too, I think there's like monsters that come and get you. Oh, no, uh -oh. no, oh, no, 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 no. I'll save you! Oh, oh no! Get oh, no. Why are we in the cemetery? I don't know, we gotta <laughs> save people, I think. Okay, so actually, how do we... I gotta drop a thing. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna hit R. Okay. That's where we are. I think there's a neighbor this way. We gotta go this way where the flashing light is. You're right. Okay. Okay. So we gotta go around. Gotta go up. Gotta get the key. Keys. Okay. Uh, and uh, we gotta oh, we go back. We can't go that way. No. How do we get back? Um, we gotta take the um. Oh God, I don't hear this. Oh, here we go. Okay. <laughs> gotta get back. Going. Gotta get back in time. Gotta get over. All right. Wayne's World party time. Party time. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> It's just Wait. turned into. It's just turned into. Oh, I lost track of who I was. Yeah, this is not a let's play. <laughs> oh no. Okay. So yeah, anyway, yeah. This is the whole point of the game. Gotta get the dog. dog. No. Oh, we saved the dog. Okay, we got Here's, more. Here we are. Okay. Cheerleaders. Yep. Cheerleaders. 
Okay, I got something. Oh, good. And there's and then, the exit, and that's the game. Yep. It's basically all it is. And occasionally, you're gonna get oh, boss stages. It's so frantic and frenetic. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, no um, one player can move the other one by walking too far. You have to cooperate. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's um, another part of what's really fun about this. It feels like you have to work together, and that's why it's like a shout at the other person and keep running and playing. <laughs> evening of the undead. Haha, <laughs> I get it. Yeah, evening of the undead. And also, too... Um, Ooh, new guns. Yep. Oh, gotta get new gun. Wait, oh, how do I, yeah, how do I switch them? It's B. Oh, whoa! You have to hit B and then shoot him with Y. <laughs> Boom! There you go. I got a freeze ray. You we don't have a lot of uh, we don't have a lot of shots. We should probably uh, not use that. Whoa! Oh, oh I also have some TNT. Runk. Oh, whew. oh, there you go. Runk. Oh, oh, I'm already out of it. Yeah, same. Okay, so anyway, uh, anything else you want to add? I mean, to this really fun game that everyone should definitely everyone play. Everyone should just play the game. That's oh, all it is. Play the game. It's just so much fun. And there's also, didn't this just come back recently? There was. I, thought, uh, I swore I just saw this again. They the first two games as a single pack for modern systems and mm, Steam. Yeah. Okay, that's still pretty cool. That's still, yeah, so they, you have no excuse. Play this awesome game. <laughs> oh, I gotta get... Go yeah. rescue some neighbors. Rescue some neighbors. Get the woo, kid. Get woo, a, have some barbecue. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> We've got one more game to play for you guys. It's a bit of a surprise. Check this out. We're going to play Doom. Surprise. Yay. And yeah. uh, by we, I mean Zach is actually going to be playing Doom for Heck us. Heck yeah. Yeah. We just uh, set this guy up on my PC. We got the controls fixed. It was actually set up for old school computers, but... Oh, uh, we ain't doing that. No, but uh, check this out. This guy... Wait, can you can you turn it? You're all right? Yep, I'm doing good. We're All doing right, get fine. it. Go, go, kill some demons. Yeah. So, so yeah, tell us all about Doom. Oh my God, so it's, great, it's one of the best games ever made. <laughs> so there we go, and you see why. So, um, <laughs> so this is the game that basically put first-person shooters on the map. We've had first-person shooters before this in the form of stuff like Wolfenstein, Maze Hunt, and I'm going for this team. We gotta get the armor. Got the armor. All right, we're going in. So, <laughs> but, but also, you gotta keep in mind, um, anything that was a first-person shooter after this, for the longest time, was called a Doom, Doom clone. clone. We didn't yeah. have genres for everything yet. In fact, I still think we have terrible genre names in we, video games. Oh, we totally like, do. Metroidvania is a, is the same thing of saying Doom Clone. It means nothing it, without yeah, context. It means nothing. So, Doom Clone could have meant um, you're killing demons. Yeah. And that has nothing to do with uh, first person shooting, which is really what this was defining. So, right. um, this was standing out because of the fact that you could move around in a 3D environment so freely. Um, uh -huh. You click things and they blow up <laughs> oh my god and it's so much fun the mm. level design is so good the engine that they use to run this is amazing these games are alive today because of the engine that john carmack made and not only that but the nostalgia so many people have over the levels that yeah. people like sandy peterson and especially john romero actually no i need to get a secret uh made in order for this to be able to yep here we go all right going in oh you need to go away he, Hi. yeah, Zach knows what he's doing, and uh, I'm just kind of like, whoa, yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry, and I'm trying so hard not to be twitchy, because I know you can't really stand. Yeah, unfortunately, this. I can't play um, first-person shooter games anymore. They get me really nauseous, but uh, you're fine it. now. We're not going to be playing it, it that long, so we're going to give yeah. you a chance to at least mess around with this and tell um, us why Doom is so freaking amazing. So, this was basically based in the, on... In the gore, too. Like, oh my gosh, nothing yeah. Nothing did this. Yes, yeah, so nothing was like this. This was basically based on, like... Just 90s in general, Dungeons and Dragons, Heavy Metal, Slayer, Ozzy, and all that. And just their love for, like, fast-paced, just shooters. Mm -hmm. And this, you know, the... This is this this is the one where it's like, well, what's the story? What does it matter? Yeah, who cares? Who cares? <laughs> There's a quote, but I don't know if I you really have, want to the say. The story is you have a gun. You have a gun. <laughs> there are demons. They've killed everybody. Kill the demons. And yep, it's like that's all you need. Oh. Oh, you're being sneaky, yeah, are um, you? Yeah, this, this might even be one of the games that we talk about um, if we do end up making an episode oh about uh, the ESRB. Oh, gosh, Specifically yeah. Specifically talking about uh, what people were using as references for games that were corrupting the youth of the world. Oh, man. And th uh, this th the other thing that this really put on the map, too, death matching and network play, mm -hmm. multiplayer. My gosh. There was more copies of this game installed mm -hmm. on computers than there were Windows at mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. <laughs> And this is why Bill Gates, when Windows 95 came out, had a whole presentation where he was the Doom guy in a trench coat. 
and he was touting that Windows computers could run games like Doom. That's how influential that's the, this game. That's the standards, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, computers are basically, well, it can run Doom. <laughs> it can run Doom. <laughs> and the other thing that I love about this too, especially now, and if you really want to get into these games, I'm not running the original version of this game. I'm using a source part called GZ Doom, which modernizes and updates it to stuff like widescreen, mouse look like this, re aiming reticles and stuff, because you are locked to a 2D plane. You can't even jump like you right. can in this. There's no uh, there's no point to it. Um, and it would also, actually be a lot better for me playing it, because the less movement actually gets me less nauseous. Right, but, but, I'm, but you don't really need to worry about... Obviously, this is more about. standard what you would expect, I, uh, you know... Uh, but the reason why I'm talking about this game still and why people are still playing and love this game still, the modding scene. They made it so that way this game is so easily moddable and that you can actually do a whole lot. People have made new entire co total conversions of this game where they just made whole games based mm -hmm. on this. Like the most recent one I can think of is called uh, Head On where you play as a orc maiden who is in an underground world and you've got to fight a cult and you have like fantasy weapons and stuff there's map packs there's mods this these games this one and doom 2 doom 2 especially which we might talk yeah, about next time just did so much for pc gaming and i cannot understate enough how fun these games still are to play even to this day especially now that i've been able to remap these <laughs> controls properly <laughs> and actually go and use WASD, like modern controls mm -hmm. in a game from 1993 in this. It's just... It's unbelievable is, for 1993. Yeah, exactly. Oh I mean, gosh. like if it weren't for Doom, think of what we wouldn't have today. There's so many amazing games like, I mean, Chex Quest, Zach, Chex we, Quest. we wouldn't have Chex Quest. And that is a world I do not want to live in. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Oh, I can't hardly see the gammas down so much, but yeah, yeah it, I'm just firing blind, basically, into, yeah, like, basically. the darkness. So, uh, anyway, how about oh while Zack is murdering the hell out of these zombies and everything that moves, <laughs> we talk about your favorite game of this year, Zack. What would that be? Doom. <laughs> it's Doom. <laughs> Oh my god, it's dude, there is no contest. Like, I love Rondo of Blood. That is still one of the greatest gosh yeah, daily yeah, dang games. One of the made. best Castlevania games came out this year, and it's still Doom. It's still Doom because of oh, oh my yeah. god, there you go. That's actually really cool. With the, oh, uh, yeah, with the effects. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like there's a lot of goodies in here, and they want you to get, but of course, it's you've got to traverse in this, see, yeah. yeah, mini maze in order to get it. Mm -hmm. But Nothing like this had been ever seen before, and honestly, I don't think anything like this or Doom 2 has ever really been made or topped, mm -hmm. even by later Doom games themselves, and I love Doom, so to, see th to say that really puts it into perspective of how I feel about this game. We'll get out of here. We got most of everything we needed. Sure, and um, um, so what would you say is the most influential game of this year, Zach? Doom. <laughs> and why is it the most influential game as well? <laughs> because of what it did for not only the first-person shooter genre and yeah. for PC gaming, mm -hmm. but because of the mods that people can do and they were open to it. The de And also mm -hmm. the death matching, the multiplayer, the network code that went into this so, so much just comes out of this little wad. Where's all the data? It's in Doom, and it's just so mm -hmm. widespread and throughout the... Here's the thing, too. The technical marvels that basically John Carmack basically put out is so influential, and we'll talk about that when we get into, like, a certain other game I really want to talk about a couple years in the future, so a couple more videos. Mm -hmm. Like, not only in game design, but technology-wise... This game basically influenced and like just played an uh, played a role in the creation of so many different games. Mm -hmm. And in a certain game we'll talk about later, you're playing Call of Duty, you're still basically playing a game from 1996 when we get there. Effectively. So, mm -hmm. just for those reasons alone, I think this is one of the most influential games of all time. I totally agree. <sighs> yeah, so it is. Um, what about you? While I while I calm down and you, kill some you more keep things, shooting stuff. Now, um, though, I totally agree. This is one of the most influential games um, that we're ever going to see. Just to make sure that we also cover another very influential yeah, game on this please list. Please do. Yeah. Um, how would I say the second, the honorable, the the second most influential, in my opinion, 
is Star Fox. Oh gosh, yeah. Star Fox is such a big deal in a similar vein of this too, but it's doing it on a home console. It's doing it with a new FX chip and it's playing like a whole new type of combat in like reimagining uh -huh. what old video games were at the time, which we had so many space shooters. Oh we gosh, had yes. so many of them. Too it's, many. Too many. And Star Fox basically took all of them and said, "None of you matter. This uh -huh. is the future." And unfortunately, <laughs> It, it was. Kind of that ball. <laughs> yeah, but for games in general, it was. So, um, my favorite game of this year to yes. play, however, is the exact opposite. The polar opposite <laughs> of what you're playing right now. Yeah. And it's funny, I actually changed my mind on this before we started playing this. Oh, we this. did? Okay. I did, Ooh, yeah. there's a pink. Oh, wow. They, they already start throwing pinkies on mm. Ultraviolence. I forgot about so that. It's my original favorite game of this year. We didn't cover today. We actually took it off the list. That's how many games we wanted to talk about. Oh, for the yeah, record, yeah. it was Gunstar Heroes for yes. the Sega Genesis. That game was a blast. You should play it. Um, but my favorite game of this list is Kirby's Adventure. Yeah! <laughs> Yay, Kirby's Kirby. Adventure! It's just, it's such a well-designed, well-structured game. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's, like, comfortable enough that anyone can, like, cozily play through it. It's got, like, so many different ways to play it with mm -hmm. uh, different, well-balanced um, uh, power-ups that you can get through the so many levels. It's, it's like, the best that the NES could offer, honestly. It's probably the last time we're going to talk about the NES. Yeah. So, you know what? Let's at least give it out uh, that we're going to go out with a bang in more ways than one. <laughs> and at the very least, I'd say that the uh. NES has, has done wonders for the industry as a whole. And it's it's crazy that even at this late in the game, my favorite game of this year is still on the NES. An, an NES game, it's yeah. Still and an that's NES phenomenal, game. yeah. It is. Consider how we can play stuff like this, and it's this. This is the same year. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is yeah. the same year that an NES same game came out. Year. Yeah, exactly. But oh. uh, yeah. Hey, anyway, buddy. So. We'll <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I'm gonna let Zach do his thing, but thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of Hitbox. If you enjoyed the show, you can help us keep it alive by supporting us on Patreon with the links in the show notes and this video's description. Yep. For those of you on YouTube, remember to like this video and subscribe for more, and be sure to let us know what you thought of the show and what other topics you'd like to hear us cover in the future. And special thanks to our amazing Patreon members. <laughs> See ya. Ah!